Hi, my name is Paula Puffer, and I am a writer and photographer here in the Houston area. And today I'm here to talk about my photography journal, um, which I also used mixed media techniques on. Um, the journal started out as kind of a regular journal. I knew there was going to be a visual photo uh, a visual component to it because of the photography but I didn't know how that was going to play out initially. So with that, let's start with the journal itself. It's a black 8.5 by 11 um, moleskin book. Um, I like it because I can close it and it will stay closed when it's in my purse and I have the option of using a bookmark to mark where I'm at when I'm working my way through the book. Um, I started this journal after I participated in the Clarion Call by Selena Metria. Um, that was recommended to me by Don Giannotti of uh, Lighting Essentials and um, also the, the educator on um, Project 52, which is a year-long project for shooting and, and learning more commercial techniques and better photography techniques. Um, but Don was encouraging us as part of Project 52 to uh, keep a visual journal or keep a journal of some sort so that you, you had a place where all your ideas were. So when I started, the first thing I put in here, if you can see that, um, are some affirmations about um, my creative life. And then I also put my vision statement in here, which is uh, I explore the places I visit and the people I meet to tell a story. And that's really not only true of my photography, but also true of um, my work as a writer. So uh, the one thing I wanted, I knew that I wanted when I first started this is that I didn't want a lot of rules for this. I knew that there was the strong visual component. I also knew that there was going to be writing in here, but I decided that the writing did not have to be in a traditional way. So, you know, no page after page of notes that are read left to right and up and down. Um, even on, on this first page, I've got a little list that, you know, flows like traditional writing, but then I've got a whole long entry and list of things that I turn the page sideways to write. So there's a lot of stuff like that through here. Um, there's also planning spreads for projects that I'm doing as part of Project 52. This particular one is the uh, strings, uh, string quartet CD cover that we did. Um, I knew that I wanted it to involve flowers. I didn't know how, so this page is kind of an exploration of that. Um, and there's lots of pages like that. Um, here's a spread that I'm working on. It's very much in flux um, as far as what I'm going to put here. Uh, but I have a project of old and abandoned places in Texas that I really want to explore. Uh, this picture is one I took on a business trip uh, and is the small town of Orla which is between uh, Midland, Odessa and Carlsbad. And it really is in the middle of nowhere in the cross section of a farm to market road and a highway. And it just was a really neat place. And I thought, you know, there's got to be more abandoned places like that to explore. So that's one of the things I want to explore. And this project page is where I'm going to do that. Um, I've posted I pasted images from different uh, photographers in here, but I also make sure that I paste my images in here. Um, to me, it, it's a good way to, number one, put the images that I really like with the images that I really like of other photographers, and it helps me to see where I'm at and just grow as a photographer and be more confident that my work can stand up against some of these other photographers. Um, this, is a, this is another spread. This particular spread has to do with light and night photography. Um, you know, you've got the light lit up here, and then you've got a well-lit bowl with some squash on top of it, and then you have some 
some light writing here. And then this is an old Russian aircraft with a flash up in the cockpit. So yeah, there's lots of things that I do. Um, let's see. I have my projects list. Doesn't matter if I do it or not. If I think of an idea for a project, it goes on this page. So, and I'm sure there will be other pages to go with it. But this way, I don't have the excuse to say, oh, I have nothing to shoot. I've got something to shoot. I just have to pick it. Um, the other cool thing on this particular spread is a letter that I wrote to my future self um, describing my last day as a full time employee. Um, that is one of my goals. So um, it was really kind of cool how I got this letter. Um, I, it just kind of appeared in my brain one day when I was walking into work. And I literally had to write this down so that I, before I did anything else, because it was, it weighed that heavily on me. But I, I put that in here as a validation of the work that I'm doing, just to remind me myself what my goals are and what I have to do because I cover everything that I need to take care of in this letter. So let me see what other interesting things. This is this right here is a um, list that I did for a project that I did while I was in Iowa regarding my grandmother. So I kind of set out what I needed to do and, and those the strategies that I need or the shot list that I need to put with it. This is also another list of things that I need to shoot just so I can learn how to shoot them. Um, I got to the point where I was getting close to the end and I knew that I needed to go ahead and make more pages. So when I went ahead and did that, um, I decided to use some mixed media techniques for that. So that's one of the pages that I created. Um, this uses sequin, sequin waste or punchinella, um, which is literally what it is. It's the, it's the leftover pieces that from when they make, uh, from when they make sequins. So, um, I just find it adds a nice little visual touch to the page. Um, in this page, I played a little bit with the layout of the photographs. Previously, I'd been doing like magazine style where you've got a picture up here and then, you know, two or three pictures down over here, but I changed it up. Um, let's see. Where's the one that I really did it? Oh, this one. Um, I really. Like I said, I, I really tried not to maintain those rules that I, I've learned through publishing. Um, this is just a pink page with other shades of pink in the images. And then this is a blue page, but the green I thought was a nice compliment. So I may use these as a base exploration of these two sets of colors. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, there are things that I've added here, like the band off of my business cards, just because it was a big step for me to get business cards. Um, and as I started prepping the pages further back, I realized that I needed space. So I've got a page like this, and now I've got a page after that. That's not the page that has a blank layout so that if I'm working on a on a different project or I've got an idea that I need to sketch out I've got space to do that in and write my notes and, and really think about what I wanted originally I wasn't going to do that but it turned out to be a big thing a really good idea I think in the long run um, in the back here I'm doing the hi Kodak hi kitty um, in the back, I did pages that have color sprayed on them and some gesso on them so that they've got a little bit of a rougher texture. Not sure, excuse me, how I'm going to use those, but I'm looking forward to getting back there. I've also got pages that have stencils on them. And there's one back here. I 
can find it. Um, this is this is one that I've got. The stencils come from a company up in Chicago called Artistseller.com. Really love them. They've got good quality products. But basically, I laid the stencils down, and then if you notice, I've kind of got a color wheel thing going on. So there's the yellow, there's the green, the blues over there, and the purple and red and orange. Um, this kind of page is just paint laid on there. Uh, and then I can write on it with like a gel pen or a, a Sharpie pen or something like that. One of the things I did when I started adding color to the book is I went back and on the pages that I'd already completed, I looked for blanks, you know, good chunks of blank. Uh, okay, go back. Good chunks of space of white space where I could maybe write something. So that's how those started. Um, these are really good for quotes, I find, or just an idea that I have for a shot. I can, you know, I can write it, oh, I want to do this, and this is how I'm going to do it, and, you know, this is where I think I want to do it. You know, it doesn't have to be big. It just has to be big enough that I can write it down and put that idea in there. Um, so, yeah, so I carry a little stack of images that I've collected off of the web. Um, these are my inspiration images. They go into the book with the help of Elmer's glue. So rub a little glue on the back, stick it in the book, um, see where it lands. And, you know, sometimes I use this as a writing prompt as to what I like about the image. Um, and just kind of explore it a little bit. These are some of the other products I used in the book. The Distress Stain, which is great for laying down long, large swaths of almost, um, uh, what's, what's it called? Magic marker-like color, except they're a lot cooler than magic markers. This is some of the ink sprays that I used. Uh, these are the Adirondack ones, and then I've got a Delusions one floating here. Um, I also have little paint pots of acrylic paint. These are the silks. These are something else I got from artists, artist seller. Um, and then I have the acrylic paint daubers, which are really great when I'm trying to do stenciling type stuff. Um, and I get these at Texas Art Supply. But really, the biggest thing is making sure that I'm committed and I do write two to three times a week in my journal. Um, I, it seems to work. It seems to clear the clutter in my brain that may be there um, and really helps me to move forward with what I, I want to do. So I hope you enjoy this and have a good week. Bye.